Mr. Kinross, Father. Thank you. Good morning, Sir Morris. You're the fellow who was here about the insurance, aren't you? Oh, no, sir. There was another fellow, another representative of our company. Was it? I could have sworn it was you. Then I always forget a face. Ah, forgive me. This is a musical box, really. I can never get the thing to work. It's just some Excuse little... me for butting in, but uh, you see, it's about that burglary last night. Uh, you know, across the road. Oh, dear. I hoped I'd heard the last of that. The police were here all the morning asking a lot of silly questions. Sit down, Mr... Uh, uh, Kinross. Kinross. Do you mind if I smoke? Oh, no, no. Help yourself. I hope I won't have to take you over all that again. But you see, being head of international insurance this side, I'm sort of involved. This is the tenth robbery of the sort this season. The tenth robbery to involve one of our clients. And of course, my chiefs back home are getting rather concerned about it. They seem to blame the Paris office. That's me. That's quite understandable, isn't it? Beg your pardon. What's that? Oh, no, no, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean that. What I meant was it's quite understandable that you're anxious to clear the matter up. I told the police all about it. I was sitting up here late last night. I very often do. I heard the whistle. Oh, dear. Bother. Is it? No, I don't think so. Ooh, let's have a look at that. Ooh, that ought to fit in somewhere, I think. Ah, then. No wonder it won't work, eh? Uh -huh. You were saying? What was I saying? I understand you saw this fight with the policeman. Oh, by Jove, yes. What a fight. Is the policeman dead? He's in pretty bad shape. I believe you told the police you thought you'd seen the man before. Did I? Yes, I think perhaps I did, but I'm thinking it over. I'm not so sure that I'd recognize him again. You know, I did a lot of welfare work in England, prison visiting. And uh, maybe this fellow had typical criminal features, which made me think he seemed familiar. They yeah. do have them, you know. I remember I made an awful gaffe the first time I met the Bishop of... Um... Then you're not sure that you'd no recognize him if you saw well, him? Well, not absolutely, my dear fellow. After all, he was the other side of the street, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. I believe most of these houses are unoccupied. Well, when the season's over, we usually shut up for the winter. There's only mine and the Villa Miramar. Miramar? That's the one directly opposite, isn't it? That's it, yes. Oh, is that the occupier going in just now? Let's have a look. Oh, yes, that's the lady. Uh -huh. Who is she? She's a Mrs. Atwood. Mrs. Eve Atwood? How do you know? She's a client of ours. Uh-huh. There's no husband, is there? No, 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 no. The marriage's been dissolved. She lives there alone. As a matter of fact, she's recently become engaged to my son. Oh. Oh. Well, if you don't mind, Sir Morris, I think I'd like to examine all the locks in the house. Uh, on the windows. I see you have 17 windows in this house. Is that so? Come along, my boy. I'll get someone to show you round. Thank you. This is the diamond and turquoise. Yes, now ah, then. This belonged to Madame Lambal, a favorite of Marie Antoinette's. She was wearing this when she was hacked to pieces by the mob. You leave it here like this in the open? Well, of course, I like to know it's here to greet me whenever I enter the room. You know, I made an interesting discovery today. Uh -huh. All the houses in this block can be opened by the same key. Is that so? Really? I think it's time you had a new lock put in your front door. Ah, oh, come in, my dear. Uh, this is Mr. Kin Ross. Good morning, Lady Laws. Mr. Kin Ross is from the insurance company, my dear. He wants to examine the locks or something. Would you mind showing him round? Well, I, I've just thought it'd be a good idea if you put some simple burglar alarm in here. You see. Yes, it would work. You could put a contact plate under the car, but the opening of the door would set the alarm off. Personally, I'd welcome any burglar who wished to take this rubbish. I'm afraid my company would have something to say if you did welcome them, Lady Laws. Uh, goodbye. Uh, thank you. Hello, darling. Oh, hi, darling. <laughs> mm, you're just in time for tea. Mm. I'd have been here sooner, but there was a frightful rush at the bank today. Mm. Oh, darling, they're beautiful. And Toby, when are you going to stop spoiling me? When you marry me. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Eve, what? have the police been pestering you about this wretched burglary next door? Oh, no, not really. Do you know that I never woke up to see or hear one bit of that row last night? But the police have been at your house for ages. Yes, yeah, so I gather. Uh, Father actually saw this thing happening. Oh, I say, you've got a visitor. Hmm? Oh, no, not really. It's, it's an investigator from the insurance company. He's upstairs right this minute investigating all the doors and the windows. As a matter of fact, they did the same thing at your house. Well, I must say, this is very nice. Mm-hmm. Eve. What? Eve, my dear. When are we going to get married? 
Oh. Oh, uh, excuse me, I, I didn't realize... I didn't oh, know. Mr. Kinross, I'd like to introduce my fiancé, Mr. Lawrence. Oh, no, uh, how, how do you... How do you do? do? Oh, would you like some tea, Mr. Kinross? Uh, no, no, thank you. Uh, I, I'd better be going. Oh, there are just two things, Mrs. Atwood. First of all, of course, the lock in the front door will have to be changed. Why? Incredible as it may seem, Mr. Laws, all the locks in this street are the same. One key will open them all. Mrs. Atwood's will open yours, and yours will open Mrs. Atwood's. But that's outrageous. You're quite sure? Yes, yes, quite. The house next door was opened with the key. You know, what surprises me is the fact that all this didn't come to light when the policies were first issued. Well, I must say it was very slack of your people. Yeah. Well, the second thing, Mrs. Atwood. Yes? Your jewel case. I wouldn't leave it in full view of anybody who walks in. Well, I promise never to let it happen again, Mr. Kinross. Thank you, Mrs. Atwood. Of course, the main thing from your point of view is the lock on the front door. Yes, Mr. Kinross. <laughs> Good day, Mrs. Atwood. Good day, Mr. Kinross. Good day, Mr. Laws. Well, Mr. Kinross. Hmm? You forgot your briefcase and your hat. Oh. Uh -huh. uh, good day. Two thousand for the lot. Says it's too hot. Stingy old son. Says it's worth four times as much as that. What's his grumble this time? Well, it seems you were recognized by the old boy who lives opposite. Oh, that's ridiculous. Nobody could have recognized me at that distance. Why'd you have to tangle with a cop? If you'd kept on your toes, I wouldn't have had to. You were four minutes late. All right, all right. We've been all through that once. I missed the turning. <laughs> Let's snap out of it, Bill. We've been in worse spots than this before. This one's different. What do you mean? That gendarme. He died this morning. You go and get yourself a champagne. I'll be with you in a minute. What's your news? Have you heard about your ex? What do you mean? Well, Diana has a nice little party story for you. Oh, yes? She's found herself a nice, clean young man to marry. Oh. Laws Atwood. Toby Laws, other son of some Morris Laws, Bath and then to Eve Atwood. Go on, get out, get out, the whole festering lot of you. together, Ned. She's not going to marry anyone else, you know. What do you propose to do about it? What's it to you? You and Eve were washed up ages ago. She was in love with me when she divorced me. She's still in love with me now. Well, when you get to grow up, you're like a spoiled kid. When you've got something you don't want it, take it away and you yell. Don't do your talking to London Airport. Fix a one-way ticket. May I ask who's flying where? I am, to La Bandelette. Are you crazy? If it'll shut you up, yes. You must be for going back there now. Every cop on the coast looking Look, for just it. go and fix the air ticket and stop yattering. All right. It doesn't get us very far, I'm afraid. 
nowhere, and you know it. You've read it more often than I have. Look, Dermont, the casino attracts the rich Americans and the English, well, the rich Americans anyway, and every crook on the continent. In La Bandoleta alone this last season, ten of my clients have been robbed. Obviously by the same crowd. But what would I do, Dermot? When the Sûreté instructed me to give you every assistance, I was delighted to have my old friend back here with me again and to allow you to interrogate whom you wish. Yeah, yeah, but I'm no policeman. I have to come down from Paris every time. But why, Dermot? Stay here for a few days. You learnt nothing in the Rue des Anges? Nothing you don't know. I saw some Morris Laws and, oh, uh, that, uh, girl from across the street. What's her name? My dear Dermot, you forgot her name? Are you crazy or do you think that I am? Ha-ha, <laughs> Madame Atwood. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, I also saw her fiancé, Toby Laws. You know him too? Toby Laws? Oh, yes. Très snob. A bit of a, how do you say? Une chemise farci? Une chemise farci? <laughs> Sorry, I thought that might be French for stuffed shirt. <laughs> oh, no, my friend. We do not use that idiom in French. But yes, Monsieur Laws is a stuffed shirt. Hmm. He must have something or a girl like that wouldn't fall from. Well, he has all the qualities lacking in the unlamented Monsieur Atwood. You knew Atwood? Oh, yes. They lived in the Rue des Anges until the divorce. That was uh, two years ago, just before the laws came here. I can also understand Monsieur Kinross falling for Madame Atwood. Oh, you're crazy. It is your old friend Aristide Goron who can serve you. You wish to meet her again? It is the custom of Madame Atwood to give a little dinner party every Friday at the Hotel de la Plage for her fiancé and his people. Now, today is Friday, is it not? you came here? Oh, well, not very often, only when we're feeling very gay. Well, won't you sit down? Oh, thank you. Well, how about you standing up? Dance. Oh, I think that's very nice. Excuse me. Thank you. Good evening, Lady Laws. Oh, good evening, Mr. Kenross. I think you met my son Toby this afternoon. Yes, how are you, to Mr. Laws? Good evening. Mr. Kenross, you haven't got a chair. Have half oh. of mine. Hank? This is Thank genuine you. Louis XIII, you know. It's a beautiful piece, my boy. <laughs> oh, really, Morris, must you? <laughs> I do beg your pardon. I'm very rude of me. Oh, it's perfectly all right. Uh, Mr. Kinross? Are there any jobs for women in insurance, or is it strictly a man's world? Oh, of course there are jobs for women, lots of them. Oh, I don't mean typists and things, well, I Mr. Mean... Kinross, this silly child is obsessed with the idea of getting a job. Well, Toby's got one. Toby, my dear, is a man. Yes, I know that. But the way we follow him around, you'd think he was a, a guide dog. Darling. What? Let's dance, please. All right. Excuse me. <laughs> Aren't you going to ask me to dance, Mr. Kinlaw? Oh, Lady Laws, you just took the words right out of my mouth. I do hope you won't put any silly ideas into Janice's head. Such as what? There's no necessity whatever for Janice to work. We're not as rich as we ought to be, heaven knows, but we can at least afford to give our daughter without sending her out to earn money. Well, perhaps it's not just the money she's interested in. No nonsense, of course it is. And mind you, it's all Morris's fault. He spends everything he's got on that wretched collection of his. And look at poor Toby. He's got where he is entirely by his own efforts. But if only he'd had the proper financial backing, he'd have got very much further. You know as well as I do, Mr. Kinross, that nobody reaches the top in banking without private means. Dancing with a gorgeous man and talking 16 to the dozen. <laughs> Mother's having the time of her life. Um, when is it? When's the wedding, Lady Rose? Now, that's one complaint I have against Terry. She simply will not fix a debt. Playing hard to get? 
I'm just not quite certain. Of course she's certain. But if only she'd make a definite date for it, then Toby would know where he was and be able to plan accordingly. Oh, you mean finding himself in a private income class, he can then ask for a better job, that sort of thing? Exactly. You do understand these things, Mr. Kenross. I'm glad you agree with me. Yeah. My dear, I've been talking to Mr. King. He thoroughly agrees with me. Oh, darling, I'm very happy. What about? That you ought to fix an early date for the wedding. Really? Oh, Lady Laws, uh, I, I, I think you're a bit mistaken. You do agree, Mr. Kinroth? No, no. Yeah, I, I, I did agree that it, it might be a benefit to talk. It might be a good thing for your son. But from Mrs. Atwood's point of view... Yes. It might be a big mistake. Of course, it's no business of mine. Well, I'm certainly happy that you realize that. Well, marriage is a very serious step. And, but you've been holding yourself secluded for a long time now. You haven't been moving around. It's time you got out and... and, and well, take... Uh, take my time? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's very interesting. Toby, would it entirely suit you if we set our wedding date for two weeks from tomorrow? Yeah, it would. Oh, good evening, Mr. Atwood. It's a long time since I've seen you. Two years? Man can work up quite a thirst in two years. Is Mr. Atwood staying here? Uh, not in this damp guest, huh? No, it's a splendid for me. Besides, I'm only here for a couple of days. I've got a spot of business to clear up. Thanks. Hello, beautiful. He's looking at you. That's an invitation. I'll have a martini. How about cheering up my lonely life by having dinner with me tonight? I might be persuaded. Bon santé. And by the way, who's living in the uh, place opposite our old house, the uh, Villa Bonheur? Since you left, the Villa Bonheur is taken by Sir Maurice Laws. <whistles> Laws? And tell me, so that's the family my ex-wife's marrying into? Uh, yes, monsieur. Mr. Toby, Sir Maurice's son. Well, what do you know? Good evening, monsieur. Good evening. What may I get you, Sir Maurice? Oh, nothing, thank you. I was, uh, I was expecting to see Monsieur Bousson. Have you uh, seen him around? No, monsieur, not yet. Oh, well, beautiful, I must be off. You go and get dolled up, and I'll see you at the Splendide in a couple of hours, OK? Can I depend on that? Across my heart, and uh, hope to dine with you. It's so then, pardon, monsieur, ah, I was delayed. Down. Quite all right, I've only just come myself, perfectly all right. Uh, Gaston, tell me, who's that fellow who's just gone out? I'm certain I know him. Oh, that was Monsieur Atwood. Monsieur Atwood? He wouldn't be my son's fiancé's first... Uh... Y yes, monsieur. Good. What may I get you, monsieur? Uh, du bonnet. Sir Maurice? Mm, I'll have a brandy, please, a cognac. Wait, here, wait. here, here is this. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, but, uh, is Mr. Atwood staying in the hotel? Oh, no, monsieur, he's just at the Splendide. Splendide, is he? Yes. Oh, my dear fellow, do forgive me. I'm so sorry, monsieur Poussin. What were you saying? This collection represents one of the private finest collection. Does it really? One of the private finest collection. I can't think what's happened to your father. If he doesn't hurry up, he won't have time to change. Oh, now, you know Daddy, Mother. He said he was going to the museum and then meeting Boussard after. That's no excuse for forgetting a theater party. Hmm. It's all right. That sounds like him now. Hi, darling. No, really, Morris, I do think you might have made an effort for once. Now, hurry up and dress, or we'll be late for the theatre. I'm afraid I won't be coming. Oh, but that's a shame. Toby, I'd like to have a word with you before you go, please. Well, what's got into Pop? Janice, I do wish you wouldn't use those revolting Americanisms. Well, what has got into him? He was pretty rude to Eve. Yes, he certainly was. Oh, he wasn't rude to me at all. As a matter of fact, I thought he looked very worried. Well, whatever it is, he's no call to be rude to you. Darling, he wasn't rude. Oh, Toby, I shouldn't keep him waiting. 
Yes, Lord. I shall be a minute, darling. Well, I wonder what he wants with Toby. Well, what is it, Father? Ah, Toby, tell me. Just how much do you know about Ned Atwood? Ned Atwood? Hmm. I know he was a waster and gave you a rotten life of it. That's all I want to know, why? No, I don't mean that. What do you know about their life together in London before they came here? I don't know anything about it. I don't want to know. What are you hinting at? Not hinting at anything. Look here, sir. What's all this about? Are you trying to suggest something against Eve? Well, it's essential for your career at the bank that there should be no suspicion against the character of your future wife, that's all. I consider this an outrageous interference in something which solely concerns Eve and myself. I don't know what prompts these insinuations, unless you're trying to prejudice my feelings for Eve. But I'd like to tell you here and now that nothing, and I repeat nothing, will stop me from marrying Eve. I'd like to suggest, therefore, sir, that in the future, you mind your own business, at least as far as even myself are concerned. Well, uh, shall we go? What did your father want, Toby? Mm, oh, nothing much. Um, no, something to do with money. You're right, Eve. Come along, my dear. Thank you, darling. Oh, my opera glasses. Hello, Hotel de la Plage. I want to speak to Mr. Kinross, please. Mr. Dermot Kinross. Hmm? Oh. Well, would you ask him... No, give him this message. Would you tell him that Sir Morris now knows the name of the man whose face he couldn't remember? That's it, yes. Yes, he'll understand. Thank you very much. Good night. My dear, did you enjoy your play? Mm. Well, it was very well acted, I must say, but I thought it went too near the knuckle in places. Well, it most certainly did, right down to the bone once or twice. Uh -huh. I wish I could understand Paris slang better. Janice, <laughs> and must you sit in the chair just when I straightened it? Mm. Sorry, Mother. What's this? Oh, careful, careful. Bruce, I brought that round. It's an absolute treasure. It's rather attractive, isn't it? It's a watch. Well, it isn't, as a matter of fact. It's made to look like one, but look, it's a snuff box. Oh. Well, how much, may I ask, have you squandered on that? In your present mood, my dear, I wouldn't dream of telling you. Do you know, it's pretty well unique. I, I think it was made for the Emperor Napoleon. Really? Who could undoubtedly afford to have it? <clears throat> I'm going to bed. Good night. You've dropped your glove, my dear. Snuff box, and you don't even take snuff. Good night, Mother. <laughs> I don't think your mother has the collector's instinct. <laughs> Tell me, where's Toby? Oh, with Eve. He just nipped over for a moment to discuss something. The wedding, I suppose. The wedding, yes. Yeah. Well, I think I'll follow Mother's example. I'm off to bed. Good night, darling. Good night, my darling. And don't stay up till all hours playing with your new toy. Very well. Oh, here's Toby now. That was short and sweet. After bed? Yes, good night. Good night. Now, Toby, did you enjoy the play? No. It was most embarrassing. With Eve there, I mean. She was shocked, I take it. Look here, Father. Would you mind telling me just once and for all what it is that you've suddenly got against Eve? Toby, if you get the promotion we all hope you will, it'll take you back to London, won't it? Well, eventually. Possibly Paris or Brussels first. Yes, but London in the end, eh? And then you'll have quite a position to keep up, won't you? I mean, uh, socially, your wife and yourself. Of course. Eve is as honest as the day. I trust you're right. Please don't think that I believe slanderous statements. Sir. Slanderous statements? You've been listening to some, some filthy gossip about Eve? Not exactly, but I have good call. Who have you been talking to? Who is it? I'll break his confounded neck. Well, that would do no good to anybody, so I have no intention of telling you. What I'm trying to say, my boy, is this. That if Eve's everything you say she is, good luck to the pair of you. Oh, thanks very much. But if there is something in her past that might prejudice your career, I'll stop this marriage or die in the attempt. Now, the wedding's in ten days, isn't it? Nine. <laughs> Gives me time enough to have a few inquiries made. Good night, Father. But, Toby, my boy, surely you good yourself... Night.
Oh, yes, it's your old lover boy, Ned. So this is the this is the Tony who thinks he's going to marry you. In the first place, his name isn't Tony. His name is Toby, and he doesn't think he's going to marry me. He is going to marry me. Oh, not while you're still in love with me, my sweet. Till death do us part. Remember? I'm not still in love with you, remember? Now, what are you doing here? You do love me, you know. And in the next five minutes, you're going to admit it. How did you get in? Through the door. Oh, you're such a liar, Ned Atwood. You always were and you still are. You told me you gave me back the last key you had to this house. You told me when I got the divorce you'd never bother me again. Because you wouldn't be able to trust yourself near me. Stop kidding yourself. You're in love with me still and you always will be. And despite yourself, you're going to admit it. Get out of here! Don't answer that. Let it ring. You better let me answer it. Hello, is that you, Toby? Yes, I say it's a deuce of time to ring you, but I couldn't sleep. I say I'm worried, Eve. You're worried? Something happened today, and I've got to tell you about it. Well, couldn't it wait until tomorrow, darling? Yes, I'm sorry, darling, I shouldn't have rung you. Tell me, did you like the play? Yes, I... I liked the play very much. You know, I thought you went a bit far. I mean, you weren't shocked. Oh, no, I wasn't. I wasn't shocked at all. Oh, no. Uh, well... Everything all right, is it? Oh, yes, everything is fine. Now, look, you, you just put me right out of your mind and go to sleep, and I'll see you tomorrow, darling. Good night, darling. Good night, darling. Good night. Now, will you get out of here? So darling Toby was worried in case you were shocked by the play. Wouldn't he be shocked if he knew you had a man in your room at this moment? I wonder what his father would say if I shouted across the street that the most virtuous Mrs. Atwood was entertaining an obviously welcome male guest at two in the morning. You are a fool. Ned, get away from that window. The old boy's still up, you know. It's awfully tempting, Eve, darling. Oh, Ned, please close that curtain. Well, don't worry, my sweet. He's not paying any attention to us. He's far too engrossed in our snuff box thing. Hey, what's going on? What? There's someone else in there. Oh, that's Toby. Will you please close that curtain? He mustn't see us. Will you get out of here before I... Why don't you call across? I bet your blue-eyed boyfriend would be over here like a shark. I'd rather die than ever know you were here tonight. You know, I really believe you'll mean that. It. Here, take a look yourself. It looks as though he's dead. It could be at that. But, but he was all right only a minute ago. You've just seen murder. Well, who was in the room with him? You must have seen. No, I couldn't see. I just saw a pair of hands. They were wearing like gloves. It was too dark to see his face. Well, I don't believe you, Ned Atwood. You did see. I'm telling you I didn't. You're lying again. Don't let's argue about it, Eve. Someone bumped off the old boy. And I don't suppose there's anyone in the house but his nearest and dearest. So that the marriage that's been arranged will not take place. I'm right, aren't I? Any second. I'm not afraid of the police. I don't care what you're afraid of. I'm afraid someone will find out you were here tonight. That row probably woke up the maid. All right, keep your nightshirt on. I'll slip out through the back way. Well, before you go, I'd like to have the key to my house. Do you know, I, I think I'll hang on to it until next time. I... Oh, I landed on the back of my head. 
Listen, you've got to get out of here. You never did fix that stair clip, did you? Come on. Well, be careful. I'll help you. I suppose you think it'll be better for your reputation if I stagger out of here with my, my nose bleeding and tell them that you tried to kill me while somebody... Ned. Toby tried to knock off your boy. Listen to me, Ned. No one must ever find out that you've been here tonight. Now listen to me. Come on, lean on me and I'll help you out through the kitchen. <laughs> Listen, you can get out of here by going over that garden wall. Now go back to wherever it is you're staying. Over the wall. Please. All right, all right. Doctor, is there... There's nothing more we can do before the postmortem, Mr. Toby. Sir Toby? That is your title now, no? Uh, yeah, yes, yes, of course. This has been a big shock to you. I strongly advise you to have a sedative and go to bed. Unless Monsieur Goran still requires you. No, no. Not until later this morning. Come then. And let me get you something to put you to sleep. You have an idea, my friend? No, no. Just wondering how much Toby's going to inherit. His collection's worth a great deal. Especially this necklace. What necklace? This necklace, here. What are you talking about? What necklace? It's gone. I'm terribly late. I'm not surprised to wonder you ever got here. Had a busy day? Very. And profitable too. A hey, garçon? Monsieur. The case is solved. Uh, omelette or fins up, s'il vous plaît? Très bien, monsieur. You know the murderer? We do. The charming Madame Atwood. You're wrong. What does she say when you questioned her? My dear Dermot, surely you know our methods better than that. We do not question our suspects until after the arrest. Oh, no. It is her maid we have questioned. And, of course, the Law's family. They don't think she's guilty. Oh, no, 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 no. On the contrary. They all think she's an angel. Except her maid, who perhaps knows her better. And it is her maid's evidence that will drop the knife. That blood-stained belt did belong to Madame Atwood. I don't believe it. I'm afraid the evidence is complete. For some motive that we may never discover, Madame Atwood brutally battered that old man to death. Now the cat and the pigeons are in the fire. She will go now and accuse Madame Atwood. And all the value of surprise is lost. 
If your case is really foolproof, surprise doesn't matter. If she's not guilty, it's not fair. When are you going to question her? Oh, I don't know, as soon as possible. Ah, but first my omelette. Merci beaucoup, Ned. Mind if I come along? I thought you were going back to Paris. So did I, but if you're going to arrest Eve Atwood, I think I'd better hang around. He was the kindest man in the world. In 35 years, we never had a crossword about anything. Well, he was a very kind man, and I was very fond of him. <gasps> oh, look, darling, don't you think it's time that you try to... Who could have done it? Morris hadn't an enemy in the world. Must have been a maniac. Well, I'm sure that's exactly what it was. Well, in any event, the police will find out about it, won't they? Let her and bring Paul Morris back. Or the Lambar necklace. He must have spent a fortune on that necklace. You wouldn't believe that any man could waste so much money. <laughs> My poor Morris. Well, I'm sure you have everybody's sympathy, darling. You've even let her come back into this house. What on earth are you talking about, Janice? That woman. Oh, Janice, this is no time to be... But don't you think you've got away with it? The police have got it all cut and dried. They'll get you. Janice. They'll get you, all right? And I'll laugh. I'll laugh. Be quiet. And kindly explain yourself. Monsieur Goron will do all the explaining. They're coming to arrest you. There they are now. Oh, pardon, monsieur. Is Mrs. Atwood at home, please? Ah, ma soeur, my sister Prue. Au revoir, chérie. Au revoir. Is Mrs. Atwood here? I regret, monsieur, no. She is over there. She goes to offer her, how is it, condolences to the poor lady laws. Say thank you. It's, it's absolutely incredible. I think this whole thing's been too much for her. Well, you don't think... Bonjour, mademoiselle. Is Mrs. Atwood in? Yes. Will you come this way, please? Merci. Uh, bonjour, madame. There she I... is. Go on, tell them. They won't believe me. Janice. I think I'd leave this to Monsieur Goron. Ladies, this is not a happy visit, but there are questions that must be answered. Madame Atwood, would you kindly be seated? Thank you very much, but I think I'd rather stand. Lady Laws, you must forgive me, but I shall have to ask questions which will revive painful memories. Madame Atwood, it has been established that Sir Maurice was murdered between 12 and 2 last night. Could you tell us where you were at that time? Yes, I was in bed. Uh, Madame, we have good witness that you were out of your house at the time of the murder. We have been told that you returned to your house with your night clothes covered with blood. The belt of your peignoir was found in your front garden. We have your peignoir itself too, which your maid did not send to the cleaners when you found that washing will not remove the blood. That's perfectly ridiculous, Marie. We have also the valuable information that you let yourself into your house with your key. Your key, madame, which unfortunately admits to this house as well. Do you still deny that you were out of your house? Yes, yes, I do. Is it your practice, madame, to carry your key in your pyjamas? Eve. Eve. Did you kill Sir Morris? No, I didn't. Then I suggest you tell the inspector what really happened. Whatever it was, it can't have been worse than murder. All right. You see, I, I was out of the house last night. But don't you see that I can't possibly tell? You killed my father. Will you stop that nonsense? I did not kill your father. Well, Anna Wood, were you in this house last night? No, 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 no. Eve, why don't you tell him everything? Everything. Well, you see, Ned Atwood was in my house last night. Not only was Ned Atwood in my house, he was in my bedroom. Well, don't you understand? I, I couldn't let Toby or his mother know that. They think it's awful enough that I, I've been divorced. 
What do you suppose they'd think if I suddenly let them know that I had a man in my bedroom? There was a man in your bedroom? Is that true, Eve? You see? Ned Atwood. While well, I was telephoning you. So, Toby, the police have enough circumstantial evidence against Mrs. Atwood to, to hang a charge of murder against her. I'd say it isn't true, Eve. Madame Atwood, I think it will be better if you came with me to my office. Does that mean you're uh, going to arrest me? Inspector, Mrs. Atwood is my fiancée, therefore I insist on accompanying her. I'm sorry, Sir Toby, this is out of the question. Toby, try to make up your mind. Make up my mind? Whether Mrs. Atwood is guilty of infidelity or murder. Can't have it both ways. There it is. Everything I've told you is the truth. If this is the truth, madame, then you and Monsieur Atwood saw practically the murder being committed. We, yes, we did, but we... But you did not see the murderer. No. No, we did not see the murderer. Yes, that part of your story is probably true. There isn't such a person. I've just gotten finished telling you there is such a person. Why is it that you won't ask Ned Atwood? Because, madame, Monsieur Atwood is in no position to verify your story one way or the other. What? Monsieur Atwood is lying unconscious at the Hôpital des Invalides, suffering from the concussion of the brain. I suggest, madame, you knew this fact. An unconscious man makes a very good alibi, especially when they also know that it is very unlikely he will recover. Is this true? Monsieur Atwood collapsed upon his return to the hotel last night. He retained consciousness long enough to explain that he was knocked over by a car and hit his head against a curbstone. These were probably his last words, Madame Atwood. There's something wrong here. I'd like to talk to you, Aristide. Alone. All right. Would you kindly wait in the other room, Madame? What? Madame. Oh. Yes, of course. She didn't do it. My dear friend, you should not allow the undoubted charms of Madame Atwood. I tell you, her story is true. Dermot, you disappoint me. You cannot believe that story. Well, what's wrong with it? Atwood falls and cracks his head. Mrs. Atwood said he didn't hit his nose. Bleeding from the nose is one of the surest signs of concussion, correct? Yes, but... but Atwood realizes he can't be connected with Mrs. Atwood or the Rue des Oranges. He doesn't realize she's going to be dragged in as a murder suspect, so he cooks up the story of the car. Myself, I prefer to think that she knew of Atwood's injury and used it to fit her story. Well, what motive did she have? Did you check the blood groups? Did you compare the blood in the peignoir with the... Yes, they are both the same blood group. Which group? Group four. But that's the commonest group of all. Test Atwood's blood. If it's different, that automatically disproves her story. Give me a few hours. Don't arrest her yet. Let her go home. But, Dermot, what alternative have I? I don't believe she did it. You know something? I think the murder was committed by one of the Law's family. Come in. Where, Where have you been, Marie? To the cinema, madame. I came to say madame's dinner is ready. I don't want any dinner, thank you, and please shut the door. But madame must have some dinner. It is necessary to keep up our strength. Really, why? I said, why, Marie? It is necessary for all of us to keep up our strength in this life, isn't it? Why did you lock me out of the house the night Sir Maurice was killed? Madame? You heard me, Marie. I heard, Madame, but I do not comprehend. Well, then let me put it another way for you. What exactly have you told the police about me? Madame? Why did you give the police my peignoir, Marie? When will Madame be having her dinner? I just got finished telling you that I don't want any dinner, thank you. Will Madame be going out again tonight? I haven't the slightest idea. You may go, Marie. Hello? Yes, this is Mrs. Atwood. Who is that? If Madame wishes to learn of something which will be of value to her in her present unfortunate predicament, may I suggest she calls at number six? Hello? Hello? Uh, 
Uh, uh, yes, yes, I am. Uh, hold on for just a minute. Uh, come in. There are many policemen downstairs, madame. Shall I tell them that madame will be down to see them? By all means, Marie. Show them into the front drawing room and tell them I'll be right there. Yeah, madame. This is Mrs. Atwood again. Where? The Rue de la Harpe. When? Any time. This way, monsieur. Thanks. Put it on the cup. The usual. Make it treble strength. Mm -hmm. Well, where's the boyfriend? That's what I want to know. Where is he? Madame, he... That'll do. I'm not a madame. Don't you forget it. You're looking for someone, mademoiselle? Well, you were here. You heard him arrange to meet me at the Hotel Splendide at 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. He didn't show up. Mademoiselle, he's not here. Monsieur Atwood is sick. He's unconscious. Unconscious? Good. That means somebody saved me the trouble. Atwood was here last night? Oui, monsieur. Another? What time? About seven o'clock, before Sir Maurice came in. Sir Maurice was here? Was he with anyone? Uh, he was to meet Monsieur Busson. Busson? He's what you call a dealer in the antique. They often meet. Hmm. Where does he live? Rue de la Hart. Hey, give me a taxi. Monsieur Bousson? Yes, monsieur. Bonsoir. My name is Kinross. I believe you're a friend of Sir Maurice Laws. Ah, but yes. A very good friend. And a very good customer, too. We shall miss him. Yeah, yeah I'm sure you will. Did you sell him the Lambal necklace? May I ask the reason for monsieur's question? The Lambal necklace was stolen the same night Sir Maurice was murdered. You haven't seen it since? You are not suggesting, Monsieur, I hope, that I am, how do you say, uh, anti state in stolen property? Oh, no, 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 of course not. Madame, this is good. Toby, we shall need another cup. Madame, I do not want you to misunderstand. I am of good family and character. This is Papa, Maman, Aunt Larsen, and this is my sister Marie. Yes, of course, you know Marie, she's your maid. Now, Madame, I'm afraid I have to speak with frankness. You see, in my innocence, I had always understood that Monsieur Law's intentions were honorable. That we would one day be married. Oh, yes, of course. And then you found out that he was planning to marry me. Yes, and that I understand. But, and Madame will agree, some small compensation should be given to me for my loss of time and the violation of my natural feelings, yes? Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. And then, of course, you found out that I am, I believe the expression is, well healed. Madame wishes to marry my poor Toby. I am desolated to lose him. But 
I am what you call a good sort? Yes. Uh, yes, yes, of course. Um, may I sit down? Oh, yes, of course, have this chair. This is Toby's favorite. Get out! Monsieur? I said get out of here. Oh, well, now, darling, wait just a second. I think you're forgetting that this is Mademoiselle Latour's house. I don't care whose house it is. Well, I mean, get out of here. I, I wish to speak to Madame. Without doubt. Madame will wish to discuss the nature of the compensation. Uh, well, yes. Yes, something like that. I shall be upstairs. When you wish to see me, knock on the ceiling with that broomstick. Au revoir, Madame. Au revoir, Toby. Eva. I can't tell you how sorry I am about all this. You mean you're sorry I found out about it? No, I mean, well, you've no idea what I've been through these past few weeks. Well, I think I have some idea, Toby. Is that all you have to say to me about it? All I have to say to you? It's absolutely fantastic. You have the temerity to, to be shocked because you find out about a man being in my bedroom at 2 o'clock in the morning and all the time you're, you're keeping this girl. That's different, Evie. It is different for a man. And it's not uh, for a woman. Oh, so you admit it? Admit what? You have started an affair with this swine, Atwood, after all. I never admitted any such thing, Toby. I simply said that a woman... Oh, no, not a nice woman. That's where we differ. Are you trying to imply that I'm... Dear Madame and Toby, may I please beg of you not to shout so much? We are respectable here, and it would derange the neighbors. I hope there is no disagreement about... The compensation? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, there is. Madame? I have no intention of buying back your... your lover from you. I'll tell you what. I will make you an offer. I'll... I'll double the compensation you ask if you'll persuade your sister Marie to admit to the police that she locked me out of my own house on the night that Sir Morris was killed. I do not know what my sister does. Really? I suppose you know nothing about the fact that your sister is desperately trying to get the police to accuse me of murder. I suppose with the fond hope that Toby will then marry you. Madame. Now listen, the only reason that I'm here is because the police have already come to my house to get me and arrest me. I ran away from them and came directly here. The police are coming here. It wouldn't surprise me a bit. You're trying to trick me. I do not trust you. I must talk to my sister. Listen, Toby, someone wearing yellow gloves came into the study that night and killed Sir Morris. Ned Atwood saw it happen. You didn't tell this to Goro? No. Would you like to know why I didn't? No. Unless it was to cover up your own swooning embraces. Oh, Toby, will you stop that nonsense? It's perfectly obvious that whoever did it had to be a member of your sweet and respectable family. May I come in? Would you like to tell me just what you're doing here? Am I intruding in your house, sir? You know what I mean. The front door was open. I had to see you about something. What? The police aren't going to arrest you, not just yet. But I don't understand. They, they came to my house. They came to see your maid, Marie. If I'm right, she's having a pretty rough time right now. Well... Eve, have you had any dinner? No. Oh, well, we can do something about that. So, Toby, when you telephoned Eve that night, what... May I ask what this has got to do with you? My company is concerned about the loss of a necklace. that represents a pretty big loss. You telephoned from the drawing room. Downstairs. Well? On your way back upstairs, you saw your father was up by the light shining under his study door. I quote Monsieur Garon. The carpet in your father's study is so close-fitting you couldn't possibly have seen the light. Are you accusing me of murdering my own father? I'm just trying to get at the truth. The facts suggest that you're a liar. Come on, Eve. Eve, you don't believe this story, do you? Good night, Toby. She doesn't believe me. Neither do I. <laughs> Good night. 
It's incredible. Do you realize you've, you've let me talk the whole night? That's okay. Now, about that story of yours. What about it? Tell it to me again, every word. Oh, you're joking. I've told it to you four times. I, I have a croak in my throat, and I must look a sight. Well, can't you at least wait until we've had some breakfast? Got the main details anyway. You know, you've told me something very interesting. Well, that's good. What? Who the murderer is. I did. Well, who is it? You know the person, but you're not aware of it. I can tell you, you start thinking back and rearranging facts, and that won't do. Why not? Everything depends upon your telling Goron exactly what you told me. Oh, but I don't understand that. I mean, why have I got to tell Goron? What was that? Well, that was a watch. How do you know? You can't hear a tick. Well, I know I can't hear a tick, but I saw it. It was a watch. You know what time it is? Twenty past five. <laughs> you see, it's a watch. You need some sleep. Yes, as a matter of fact, I do. You've been very nice to me. Why? You're a nice girl. I like you. Thank you. Well, I hope I haven't bored you with all the details of my mixed up luck. Can I ask you something? What are you going to do about Toby Lowe's? Do you think you're still in love with him? I'm not asking you if you are. I'm asking if you think you are. Well, I... I guess you might say that I... I don't seem to have very much luck with my men. I'm afraid, Dermot, I cannot wait any longer. I've agreed with you not to arrest Madame Atwood for a few hours. But now it is 24 hours Look, since... Aristide, I want you to do something for me. I want you to ask Eve, Eve Atwood, to tell you exactly what she said to me last night. This so charming lady has bewitched you, my friend. You spend the night with her and... Okay, okay, you talk to her all night. And then your head is turned. I'm not a detective. Oh, no, no, no. But as for Zizi Pompon, ah, that's a different matter. Any form of Zizi Pompon I can detect from a distance of three kilometers. And in the dark, monsieur. <laughs> oh, Dick. This is Dick Johnson of our London office. I received Goron. Oh, glad to meet you. Good morning, awesome. sir. Monsieur. <laughs> Uh, will you join us, Monsieur Johnson? What will you drink? Well, it's a bit early. Perhaps a beer. Good. Uh, Gaston, une bière, s'il vous plaît. Never too early for a beer. Unless, of course, you miss your four o'clock tea. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll find here everything you require, sir. Thank you. If I'm right, maybe some information in here that'll interest me. You may tell me who's responsible for those robberies. I'll make a deal with you. If you ask Eve to tell you exactly what she said to me, I'll tell you exactly what's in here. You win, my friend. You wish to come with me? No, I've got too much homework to do. All right. A bientôt, monsieur. Au revoir. Zizi Pompon. Good evening, madame. Good evening. I'm so very sorry you have been troubled once more. That's perfectly all right. Thank you. Mr. Kinross tells me that you... that you would like me to repeat my story. Ah, uh, yes, uh, Monsieur Kinross is a very good friend to you. Yes? Yes, as a matter of fact, he is. At least he's always believed everything I've ever had to say about this matter. Actually, I... I did tell you the truth the last time. It's just that I didn't tell you the whole truth. Uh, Madame, it is no good to, how do you say, withhold information from the police in these matters. Yes, I know. Now, where would you like me to begin? Perhaps Madame would begin by telling us when she last saw Sir Maurice. Well, the last time I saw him was, was the night that he was killed. Sir Morris's family and I were going to the theater together, and we waited for him at home. He was late. 
Mother? Mother, Mr. Kinross is here with some papers for you to sign. Papers? Yes. But, uh, what papers? I don't quite follow. Your husband insured the necklace for 10 million francs. Before my company can pay, it's necessary for you to sign these papers. There. There. I don't think La Bandolette is going to be bothered by any more of these robberies. We know who's responsible now. Do you think the Lambal necklace will be recovered, Mr. Kinross? Not as yet, I'm afraid. I don't think this crowd had anything to do with stealing the Lambal necklace. In any case, my company's none too anxious to pay out another 10 million francs, no matter who did it. Mr. Kinross, do you know who killed my father? I have a pretty good idea. Oh, Baba, this pen won't write. It wasn't Eve Atwood, was it? No. Then who was it? Toby, thank goodness you've come. Now you can tell me if these papers are in order. Where's Eve? Is that the police station, Sir Toby? Kinross, they mustn't... I mean, they, they can't arrest Eve. You were right last night. I did lie. And at what time, madame, did you say Monsieur Law's telephoned you? I've just gotten finished telling you that I don't know. Oh, well, can't something be done about those blinds? That light is driving me out of my mind. I'm very sorry, madame, but uh, unfortunately the shutters are out of order. But we shan't be long. Please, continue. Well, then... Then I... I replaced the telephone receiver and Ned went over to the window and as he stood there, he threatened to shout across to Sir Morris. I got out of bed and rushed across the room and, and turned off the light and tried to stop him. He pulled the curtains back and you saw? I saw Sir Morris was sitting at his desk. What was he doing? Well, I don't know what he was doing. He, he'd evidently been looking at some kind of, I don't know, snuff box. You recognize this snuff box? Uh, of course, you must have seen it before. No, I hadn't seen it before. But, but I didn't see it. But, madame, you just said you did. I did not. What else did you see? Oh, I... <laughs> Ned Atwood said that he saw somebody else in the room with Sir Morris. Who was it? I don't know who it was. At the time, I thought that it might possibly be Toby, and that frightened me even more, because the, the last thing in the world that I wanted to happen was to have Toby find out that Ned Atwood had visited me. You realize, madame, that you are accusing your fiancé of murdering his own father? No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Did this Prue ever ask you for money before this? Yeah. I gave every penny I could lay my hands on. Well, she seemed quite satisfied then. But she waylaid me that night at the theatre, during the interval, and... Well, she wanted another 500,000 francs by the next day, or else. So you got the idea of grabbing some of your father's collection and selling it. You thought this gang that's been operating around here would be blamed. I couldn't get any sleep that night, so I came down here to try and telephone Eve. I was trying to pluck up courage to throw myself on her mercy. But you didn't? And you went upstairs, went to your father's room, thinking he was in bed, and he wasn't. He was right there. And it was you they saw in the room. And you put on Daddy's gloves to... What then? Well, then I... Well, you don't think I did it, do you? You don't think I killed my own father? Well, I didn't kill him, I didn't do it. He was already dead when I found him there. Well, then... There just isn't anything else to tell you. A most interesting recital, madame. <laughs> it's incredible to me that you don't believe anything that I've said to you. You can't believe that I murdered Sir Morris. What is the alternative, madame? You say it was a member of the family, that Monsieur Laws killed his own father. But I, I didn't say that. I don't know what I said anymore. Hello, go back to the piece. Oui, easy. <laughs> A message has just come through from Dr. Boutet to say that Mr. Atwood is conscious once more. And would you please come at once? Did you notify Monsieur Kinross? Good. Good. Monsieur Atwood recovered consciousness. Now we shall be able to test your alibi, madame. You 
first woke just after I came on duty at about uh, 5.30. I immediately telephoned. But by the time I came back again, he had gone off. Then, at about half an hour ago, I heard him speak and he came to again. You heard what he said? I wrote it down. I could not understand, but that is what it sounded like. Maurice? Morris Laws. Who are you? Please, monsieur, the patient must not be excited. I'm a friend of Mrs. Atwood. She's in trouble. Eve? What kind of trouble? She may be arrested by the police. She told the police you were with her the night of the murder. She says you saw the murder actually being committed. I think you know which murder I'm referring to. I was with Eve. We saw the old boy murdered. Would you be able to recognize the murderer? It was Toby Laws. He crept up behind his father and hit him on the head. What was his father doing? Well, he was studying a snuff box. How could you tell it was a snuff box at that distance across the road? What would you say, sister, this was? A watch, monsieur. But please, messieurs, I must ask you to leave. You have overtaxed the patient's brain. He is once more unconscious. Keep watch, your sister. You will inform me directly Atwood recovers consciousness again. Sure it's safe? I shall tell the doctor one of my men must remain at his bedside day and night until he recovers. Come, my friend. Thank you, sister. we shall soon have Atwood under arrest. Although the doctor says it would be a miracle if survived more than five minutes. Have no fear, madame. You may sleep in peace tonight. Good night, Alistair. Good night, Dermot. And to you, madame. Good night. And I hope I'm forgiven my stupidity. Yes, you are. Oh, that light blinds. It's a good idea to stay here alone. Hadn't you better come back to the hotel and get a room for the night? Oh, no, I think it's all right. Really, I'm fine, thank you. Well, if you're sure. Yes, I'm sure. I'm also sure I'm glad it's all over, thanks to you. Well, I better be, better be getting along. Well, why don't you come in and let me make you a cup of coffee before you go? No, 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 I better well, be come going. Come on in. It'll only take a few minutes, and I have a lot of questions I want to ask you. You're sure you're not too tired? Yes, I'm sure. All right, then. I'll tell you what, I'll make the coffee. I'm pretty good at it. All right. Sugar, um, 
Uh, well, wait just a second. I'll come down and find it. Okay, I've got it. You needn't bother to come down. Where? Right here. Oh, we have it. In there. Oh. <laughs> you better put it down over here. What way do you like it? White or black? Oh, black, please. You know, I still don't understand how it could have been Ned, I mean. He was in the room with me the whole time. He had to get rid of the only witness the night of the robbery. He thought Sir Morris recognized him as the man who killed the gendarme. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Yes. It was Ned. Toby came into his father's study. Found him dead. Just after Ned had left. I still don't really understand how or when. Ned, first of all, murdered Sir Morris. And he came across here to you to establish an alibi. Look, you're worn out. Why don't you go to bed and try to get some rest? Try to forget all about this. Well, that's not, not ever very easy to do, is it? Forget. No, it's not easy. But try. Try to forget everything. Including Toby. <laughs> oh. Well, I think I told you once before, I... I don't ever seem to have very much luck with... <laughs> with my men. Well, luck changes everyone. Go on upstairs and lock yourself in. I'll let myself out. If you want me, you know where you can find me at the hotel. I think I better go across the street and put them out of their misery. All right. Expect to see me again, did you? I see you found yourself another new boyfriend. Too bad you didn't keep him here, my sweet. Because you're never going to see him again. It's a pity, isn't it? Yes, well, in spite of everything, I suppose I ought to thank you, Kinross. Well, a mighty fine family we turned out to be, I must say. Yeah, uh, a cigarette. the door key. In the hole. Getting all the credit, what do you get out of this? 